Good evening, Roxana. Um, we are almost up on the time. It's right at 6.29, so I'm a couple of minutes early. As you come on, if you will uh, just chime in and let me know you're there. Um, as we prepare for this lesson tonight. I thank God for each one of you. Uh, I just say good evening. I'm going to give us a couple of minutes as, as people are coming on and joining in. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes there. Good evening, good evening. Amen. Uh, we've, we've got people coming in right regular now. Amen. Thank God for you uh, tuning in this evening. As, as we prepare to go into this study, um, we're still dealing with strength through surrender. Strength through surrender. I, I thank God for each one of you tonight. Uh, as 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 we prepare uh, to go into this lesson, I just thank God for you and and you tuning in tonight uh, via this virtual platform. Um, God is truly blessing. Um, he's continually blessing us uh, in the season that we're in. And to know that as 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 believers, Regardless of the season or the time, God is continually uh, going to bless us and, and move us forward in the kingdom of God. Uh, that's that's good to know. Good to know. Um, I just think it's important that we not lose our focus. Um, I, I, I thank you uh, for all the encouragement that I've received from so many of you. I thank you so much. Uh, it, it, it means... Uh, so much to me to be able to know that I have a church family who's supportive of their pastor uh, and we are marching forward for the kingdom of God. Um, tonight, as, as as we prepare our hearts, we'll, we'll go before the Lord in prayer. Um, we're about two minutes in. Let's give them one more minute and then we're going to go before the Lord in prayer tonight. Um, and, and we want to thank him for Sunday. We want to thank him for Sunday, for Resurrection Sunday. Uh, the Lord has been just truly good. Uh, the most important Sunday of the year, and, and we celebrated it. Um, with, without the resurrection, there's no need for the church or Christianity. It doesn't exist without the resurrection. And, and, and I thank God for the energy that we had on Sunday uh, to all of those that are tuning in who are not members of Rock Sound, but yet you've decided to support us and be a partner through uh, this virtual platform. I say thank you for being here. Uh, it's I'm, I'm looking and I'm seeing all of you. If I start calling names, I'll leave somebody out. But let, let me say this. I see you. I thank God for you. Uh, and I'm praying for all of you continuously. Uh, it's, it's just good to be here. Let's go before the Lord in prayer tonight. Father God, we thank you right now for this platform. We thank you for the ability, even in this time, that we can still come together uh, to study your word. And, and Father God, then we say thank you for all you've done for us, even in these stringent times and, and times of chaos, confusion in our society. Lord, we thank you for perfect peace among the household of faith, that Lord, that you've kept us all in perfect peace, Father God. And then Lord, you met our needs more than anything. Lord, you met our needs. Now, Father God, as your man servant, I just said, bless this, bless this teaching tonight. Bless the efforts that I put forth tonight, that it'll be a blessing to some man, woman, girl, or boy, Who's, who's looking in tonight, who's tuning in. And, and Father God, use it now. Use this platform as a medium to keep us encouraged. And then, Lord, to strengthen us in these days to come. 
And we say thank you now for what you have done and what you are doing. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's, it's, it's just good to be here with you again. Like I said, I thank God for all of you. Uh, I, I, I see you. I know you're there. Uh, it's, it's amazing what can be done when we put our minds to it. Uh, Roxana, we've stepped out on a, a whole nother level beyond bricks and mortar. We've, we've gone to a whole nother level in our worship. We've gone to a whole nother level in our Bible study. We can't go back to where we were, were. Uh, this will be a new norm for us. We're, we're going to take evangelism, our evangelism seriously and move it to another level. I just know what the Lord desires of us. It's, it's greater works because he's blessed too many in our house for us not to be faithful and do the things that we need to do for him. Amen. So tonight as, as, as we go back into this lesson, we, we were dealing with strength through surrender. We've, we've been studying kingdom living for years now, uh, and I can tell the difference. We, we've gone beyond bricks and mortar. We've gone beyond bricks and mortar. We, we have moved to this place now in, in our worship and in our study where our focus is on the kingdom of God and, and all that God is doing for us. So, as 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 we look at this thing, strength through surrender, uh, when we closed out the lesson last week, I asked you some simple questions. Are you under the word of God? Is the Bible, is the Bible the thing that matters in your life? Is it the mandate in your life? Uh, to to attend church is not enough. To to say that I go to church on Sunday. It's not enough if you're not living according to the mandates of God's word. Now, beyond those two questions, the next question is, are you loving it and living it? Are you loving it and living it? It's one thing to be under the mandate, but you don't love it. To be under the mandate of God and not love it means that it becomes a burden. God is not a burden to us. He's a burden bearer. He doesn't burden us down uh, in, in our lives. So here, here we are now at this point, we have to make a decision as believers. Am I loving this life that I'm living? And if I'm living it and I'm loving it, then am I obeying him in everything that I do? That's important. That's an important question to ask yourself. Am I obeying him according to his mandates? So often we, we, we take the challenge of walking the Christian walk, but we want to do it our way. We are not living in surrender. I'll, I'll take it a, a step further. We are not living in total surrender to God. We are living in surrender on our terms. We are, we are living on surrender when I can get what I want. I, we are living in surrender when, when God allows me to name it and claim it. We're, we're living in surrender when everything is going good. But what about, when things what about when things happen in your life that you don't have any control over? Are you still living according to his mandate? I, I know God is able and here it is. Here it is as, as we look at living under surrender, through surrender, then remember last week I told you we become lesser so he can become the greater. We give in, we bend the knee, we bow down in our worship and homage to him. We surrender our lives because it's through him that we live. I told you before that it's a win-win with Christ in your life. Because with Christ in your life, you don't lose. Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So even in that situation, uh, even unto death, we still have victory. So now as, as we go forward tonight, talking about living through surrender. When you're willing to be, catch this, I want you to catch this. I don't, I don't want you to miss it. When you are willing to be to Jesus, what Jesus was 
in his humanity to the Father, then Jesus will be to your humanity what the Father was to him. I'm going to say it one more time for you. When you're willing to be to Jesus, what Jesus was in his humanity to the Father, then Jesus will be to your humanity what the Father was to him. That's, that's good stuff. I, I like that because it shows an utter humility. It shows the humbleness of Christ. And I'm, I'm going to show it to you in scripture, but I wanted you to hear that. To live in surrender means that you are watching the life of Christ and you are adapting certain things that you saw in his life as you study the word of God and you're applying them in your life so that he can be a blessing to you. When we look at the life of Christ, we see him surrendering to the father. He says, thy will be done. Whenever he was questioned, even as a child, he, he told them at 12 years old to his parents, he had to be about his father's business. Uh, it, it was all about his father, not his earthly father, but the heavenly father. And, and so as, as, as we look at this thing, I want you to understand, I want you to understand if, if you will be as Jesus was to God, Jesus will become to you what God was to him. That's going to help somebody right there tonight. If you are willing to surrender yourself and submit yourself unto God, then through Jesus Christ, Jesus will become the authority figure in your life who will become your caretaker and the supplier and the protector of all that you need and have, but you have to be willing to surrender. So many people are not willing to surrender. Too many people are confused and caught up and feel like they have to do it for themselves. I'm a living witness. I, I, I thank God for what he's done in my life. He's shown me over and over again that he is the reason that I even exist. I didn't do this myself. I can't carry it on myself, but it's because of him that I exist. I have my, 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 my breathing, my, my living. It's because of him that I'm able to survive and even in hard times and uh, co the coronavirus, COVID-19, this whole situation, I've seen worse than I'm seeing now. Somebody gonna help me right now. I feel that moment in my life. I, I, I've had some moments in my life when I had uncertainty, but through my surrendering to God, God has always made a way for me. He's always made a way for me. As, as we go forward tonight, uh, if you have your Bibles or your electronic device to retrieve a scripture, if you'll go with me over to Philippians, Philippians chapter two, if you'll join me in Philippians chapter two, starting at verse five, I'll give you a couple of seconds to get there. Philippians chapter two, going over to verse five. Philippians chapter two, going over to verse five. I thank God for all of you tonight. I see you chiming in and letting me know you're out there. Uh, it's good to see you. And as I said, if I start calling names, I'll miss one. But I just want you to know that I know you're, you're there. Um, if you are there now, Philippians chapter 2, going over to verse 5, we want to look at a, a passage of scripture. And I want to point out some things to you as, as, as we go forward. This is the word of God for God's people, starting at verse number 5. It says, let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus, whom being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death 
even the death of the cross. Here we are. This, this is it. This is the key to this surrender piece. Just a few minutes ago, I told you, if you're willing to be to Jesus, what Jesus was in his humanity to the Father, then Jesus will be to your humanity what the Father was to him. Here it is. It's right here in the text. To, to walk in utter humility and to surrender, totally surrender. There are some things in this text that you must have in place in your life. And this is a self checkpoint tonight because if they are not in place, then you got something that you can work on. If they are not in place, then you have something that you can work on. Here we are. Let's examine what the scripture says. It says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. So the first part of surrendering is realizing that you need to have the same mind of Christ. That's not hard to understand. You got to think like he was thinking to get in that position where God can do what he needs to do for you. First is to develop a mind of Christ. The second thing that I want you to hold on to that comes out in the scripture is, he says within the word, he made no reputation for himself. So we're talking about strength through surrender. Have the mind of Christ. You gotta think like he thinks. And not only do you think like he thinks, but at the same time, you got to be willing to make no reputation for yourself. And that's part of the problem in the body of Christ today. We, we lack a lot of hum, other humility. We, we, we tend to want to exalt ourselves. We tend to want to sometimes elevate ourselves and before elevation, you need some servanthood. You need some stewardship because with elevation comes problems. I, I hear people all the time talk about, well, if I had, but every time you say, if you had, you ought to say the problems that will come along with it. Because every time you elevate, there are new problems that come along with your elevation. Somebody ought to hear me today. You, 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 you say it's hard with the little bit of money that I have. And, and, and if I were a millionaire, well, you don't want that really if you are not prepared for it because with the million dollars come million dollar problems. Y'all didn't hear me. So God has to prepare us for our elevation, but it's strength through surrender. Have the mind of Christ. You have to make no reputation for yourself. But then he throws in a real key here. He throws in a key. He says beyond that, he says, even now, he says, be a servant. He made himself a servant. Too many of us at too many times want to be elevated and we want to be at this place in life where we are looked up to at the top of the heap. We want to be the, at the upper echelon and we hadn't earned the right yet through Christ Jesus to be there. So being a servant is important because those that desire to be great, according to the word of God, those that have a desire to be great must first learn to be a servant. Isn't that amazing? That if you want to be great, you got to learn how to serve others. And so often we are not willing to serve others, but we want others to serve us. Jesus came in his humanity. He came in his humanity. He was humble. Here it is. The father was the most important thing to him. He was humble. He made no reputation for himself, but yet he came as a servant. It's all through the word of God. All you gotta do is read through the New Testament, read the accounts of his life, through Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. You read those accounts in those gospels of his life. Those things are very apparent. Then he humbled himself. Humility will take you a long way in life, 
but our strength through surrender comes when we line our lives up to live the same life that Christ lived. It doesn't make us perfect. We are not perfect. We will not be perfect until he returns. But because he has saved us, because of the saving grace of Jesus Christ, we have to live our lives in such a way that we glorify God. And here it is. Make it, first of all, you got to have the same mind of Christ. Second, you need to make no reputation for yourself. And I, I contend that's a problem because too many people in the church want to be somebody. They, they want to have status. It's not about status. From the pulpit to the pews, it's not, not about status. I don't mean to make anybody mad tonight. But I'm not any greater than any person in Rock Sound. The only difference is the Lord put an anointing in my life. He also put a calling in my life to do what I'm doing. Other than that, I am no greater than any person in there. And on any given day, he could use anybody that he chooses. So I don't have to make a reputation for myself. All I have to do is be humble. Here it is for you as the believer in the pew. Be humble. Trust God. Let God elevate you. Let him exalt you. He'll make your enemies your footstool. I promise you, some of the same people who threw stumbling blocks in your way. Some of the same people who have mistreated you along the way, he'll make you the, he'll make them your stepping stool. He'll elevate you to a place where they won't have a problem seeing you. But you got to do it his way and not your way. Here it is. So now we understand that we have to have his mind mindset. We have to have no reputation. We have to be a servant. We have to humble ourselves, but here comes the kicker. This is the one we have the biggest problem with. It's being obedient to death. Philippians chapter two, starting at verse five. By the time you get down there, it says he was obedient unto death, even to the death of the cross. A lot of us have a problem with being obedient. You see, we want God on our terms. We want Jesus Christ on our terms tonight. We want him to bless us according to our measure. Y'all can get it. We want him to bless us according to our measure. We, we, we want the, the, the big house. We want all the rooms. We want the right car, the right ride. We want our pull-up game to be strong. We, 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 we want the right clothes. We want the right tags on the clothes. We want the right shoes. The, we, we want all this. We want the extra money in the bank, but that's not going to make you anybody. God doesn't have a problem with stuff. I stop by to tell you. I tell my people all the time. God doesn't have a problem with you having nice things. He doesn't have a problem with you having money in the bank. But when you let them become little gods in front of him, that's when he has a problem. So your strength through surrender is to learn to live a life of humility, to walk humbly with God, knowing that it's not your life anymore. Because once you turned it over to him, he can do whatever he pleases with it. He can put you in a bad situation to bring you out and still give you elevation. Y'all didn't hear me. He can let you be sick in the hospital. And it's not even about you. You got sick so he could put you in a, in a room next to somebody that needed to hear the good news. And you were the one that he wanted to use to get that news to that person. He can let you lose your job so other folk who are watching you can see your attitude when you lose it so they'll understand that that shouldn't shake them if they lose theirs. He's always teaching and he can use us as instruments of our bidding when we live in utter humility. So strength through surrender is running out of ourselves and running into him. That's a great passage. Let's go back to the Bible just for a second. There in chapter two, going over to verse number nine, it says, therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him 
the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, those in heaven and those on earth and in those under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I like that. I love it because out of his utter humility, out of his total surrender, the reward of his total surrender was that God highly exalted him. See, that's the piece that we miss. When we bend down, he lifts us up. When we are willing to bend the knee in our worship, when, when we are willing to, to give him the utter praise, when we are willing to live our lives and told us, Lord, have your way. Use me as you see fit. When, when you get to that place in your life that you are sold out, I'm talking about unto the Lord. When you are totally sold out, unto the Lord. The Lord will exalt you in due season. Your haters won't have to go looking for you because he'll raise you up and put you in a place where they can see you very clearly. And it'll be a message to them that they couldn't stop what he had for you. What God has for you is totally for you. Somebody needed to hear that tonight. You, you're worried about what folk trying to keep away from you. But if you get it right and surrender unto God, they can't stop what God has for you. The text says he gave him a name above all other names, one that every knee should bow to. He put him in the most high place. He can lift us up. As children of God, we need to understand that God has lifting ability ability. Here it is. So this evening, as we're talking about strength through surrender, I want you to understand we all have plans in life. Some of us have had five-year, 10-year plans, and we've laid out roadmaps to get to places and destinations that we wanted to get to in life. Can I help you tonight? Your plan is not necessarily God's plan. If you want to know the plan, you got to spend some time with the man. You got to have that utter humility to the point that you humble yourself, that your earthly roadmap, your roadmap that you designed that said in five, 10 years, this is where I'm going to be in my life. These are the things that I want to accomplish. You need to talk to him about that because God may not have the same plan for your life. Favor is not fair. He blesses those who he chooses. And, and as children of God, he's made all of us some promises. He's made all of us some promises. And God is, is faithful. He is not a man that he should lie. He is faithful and he will keep his promises. But the exaltation that you may be seeking in your own humanity may not line up with the plan that he has for you. What you have to realize this evening is that God knew you before you knew yourself. God knew you before you were ever twinkling in your father's eye, before you were ever the seed planted in your mother's womb. God knew you. He foreknew you. He has a plan. He has a plan for you. But the only way you can get in the plan and work it is that you have to be willing to surrender to his will and his way. Those things that I discussed with you in Philippians chapter two, you, 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 you got to humble yourself. You got to have the mind of Christ. What would Jesus do? You got to ask that question often and you got to have no reputation. You got to be a servant, but then you got to be obedient. So when you will put all these things in place, and you line up with God through the word of God and start to live your life in utter humility to God, now you find strength through surrender. My strength comes when I run out of me and I run into him. See, because you may cry sometimes, that doesn't make you weak. Y'all need to hear me tonight. I wish I could minister just for a minute because you share some tears 
in your life. That doesn't make you weak. Sometimes we find strength. We need to cry sometimes. All of us need to cry sometimes. We're human. We're fallible. We can make mistakes. Things can happen to us that we didn't ask for. People can mistreat us and do those things. But my tears don't mean that I'm weak. Because in my tears, I find strength. I feel better when I get it out of my system because I run into this man named Jesus. That's important to understand that so often in life, we're trying to live life on our own terms, but we are not strong enough to carry the burden. He said he would be your burden bearer, that he would carry the burden. He fight your battles and yet let you enjoy the victory. This stuff will not resonate with us. Your shout on Sunday morning would be more important if you understood what he was doing and could do for you. But so often we get caught up in the charismatic movement of worship and we really hadn't connected with the kingdom of God. So we are caught up on the emotional side of it versus being caught up on the spiritual side of it. When, when, when your praise is real, when your worship is real, it comes out of a place on the inside of you. It comes out of your spirit man because the spirit man is connected to the father. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to teach a little bit. The spirit man is connected to the father. The spirit man knows what God desires of you. The spirit man knows how to get it out of you. But you have to surrender. You got to be willing to surrender. Let's go forward. We got a little bit more I want to cover tonight and, and we'll be there. If we look at kingdom authority, when we're talking about this strength through surrender, when we, we look at kingdom authority, we have to understand this right here. It does not fix all the troubles of this world. Kingdom authority will not fix all of the troubles of this world. It doesn't give you all the good things of life. It doesn't give you the, the name it and claim it situation. So many folks are misteach it and say, well, you got the keys so you can have whatever it is you want. No, that's not kingdom authority because kingdom authority is spiritual. It's spiritual. It gives us an opportunity if, if we're faithful unto the Lord. It gives us an opportunity to tap into the spiritual realm. Are you with me? Kingdom authority gives us an opportunity to tap into the spiritual realm. It does not give us salvation without pain and suffering. A lot of folk want to be saved, but they don't want to go through nothing. A lot of people want heaven as their home, but they don't want to struggle on the road to heaven. They don't want to have to experience some things that other folk are going through. And, and see, here it is. Here it is. He didn't say it was going to be easy, but he did say he would never leave you nor forsake you. That's the important part. Kingdom authority is, is, is a theology that when we have to understand that God is in control of heaven and earth and all in the midst of. So when we really understand that, then we understand kingdom authority becomes spiritual authority. And through that uh, spiritual authority, we are able to walk with the Lord in such a manner that we have a spirit-filled life. This doesn't take away the pain. It doesn't take away some of the struggles, but it does give us an outlet. It gives us an opportunity that we have somebody that we can call on, and his name is Jesus Christ. The Bible says he sits at the right hand of the Father and makes intersection for us. So when, when we pray in the name of Jesus, those things that we are asking for, those things that we are seeking to God, it, 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 from God, it, it goes past Christ first, but he has the authority and the power to make intercession. Intercession means to intercede. This is good. So when you totally surrender and you're looking for your strength through surrendering, you have an advocate 
who sits at the right hand of the Father. He makes intercession for you. So through your prayers, through him, he's able to edit. That's a good word, E-D-I-T. Edit what you're asking for. Have you ever asked for something you know you didn't need? Y'all won't be honest tonight, amen. But that's okay. All of us have went before God and said, Lord, if you do this, I'll do that. Somebody has done it other than me. But you got to realize that Christ makes intercession. Y'all might have quiet tonight. He, he makes intercession. So when your prayers go up, he takes your prayers and he edits that prayer. If it's not in accordance to what you need, here it is. If it's not in accordance to what you need. Some things, if God allowed you to get everything that you asked for, some of it would be detrimental to your life. But Christ edits this. And then when it's edited, it's given to the Father who now responds. Y'all didn't get it. He responds. And his response is based on the edit version, not based on what you sent up, that you said you desire. Because a lot of times we're, we're selfish in our prayers. A lot of times we're just looking to, to get what we desire, never thinking about the adverse effect that it could have in our life. I thank God for me having an intercessor, for having Christ as my intercessor. So when I get beyond humility, and I want to get on my knees and, and pray about something or ask the Lord for something that I know could be detrimental, but I just want others to see. Have you ever asked for something you just wanted somebody else to see? You wanted a blessing so somebody else could take notice? God already knows your heart wasn't right. And at the time, you may have not needed it. And a lot of times we want more from God than we're willing to give to God. So learning to surrender gives us strength when we're willing to allow God to create the right spirit in us through the Holy Spirit that we start living spirit-filled lives. That spiritual authority puts us in a position to be blessed of God, to be blessed of God. To be blessed of him means that even in your blessing, he can keep some things away from you that would utterly do you some harm. See, a lot of times we miss it. God can keep some folk out of your life that would ultimately do your harm if, if you would humble yourself, but he allows them to show up when you are acting out of your humanity and you are not humble, he'll allow them to show up and they'll take you down through there, run you through some things, mess up your head emotionally, mentally, and, and then you wonder how you got there. You got there because you weren't humble anyway. Your strength is in your surrendering. So when we can get to that place where we can allow ourselves to operate in a spiritual authority, then this is the key, that when we live in an age when it's important for us as, as, as believers and followers of Jesus Christ to operate in this age in spiritual authority. God loves us, but more than him loving us, we have him living on the inside of us through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That's important. That how can you grieve the spirit of God? You gave your life to Christ. How can you not surrender? How can you not yield to him when you asked him to save you? When you took that walk down an aisle or you confessed your Christian experience that you met this man named Jesus, but yet then you won't give him the authority in your life to allow him to use you as he sees fit. Strength through surrender. If you're willing to bend the knee, he'll lift you up. He will exalt you. But you got to be willing to let the Lord have his way. And so often 
We're kicking against the prick. So often we're fighting against the thing that, that could do us the greatest because the Lord will put the brakes on sometimes. He'll put the brakes on before you hurt yourself. Young people say, you know, you be careful before you wreck yourself. But, but here it is. God won't allow us to wreck ourselves when, when we know that we are living in utter humility. He'll put the brakes on for us. I like that. And, 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 and that's something that I want you to hold on to. That God has some stopping sense. We don't. There are times in our life when we're in control. We don't know where the brakes are. We're, we're full speed ahead. We are all out. And those are the weakest moments in our lives. We think we're in charge and we're big, we're bad, we're strong. But you're really weak in those moments. That's how people get caught up in all kinds of circumstances and situations because they're leaning on their own strength, but not knowing that they are really weak. You hear people all the time saying, oh, I, if that was me, I wouldn't do that. If it was me, I wouldn't put up with that. Don't take advice from folk. Be careful who you take your advice from. Make sure they live in right first because folk will tell you what they won't take but you don't know behind closed door, they taking that and the end song. Oh, I want to bless somebody with that tonight. Be careful who you seek your advice from. These folk claiming to be strong, they're weaker than probably you are in your worst moment. They just misleading you. And after they've torn up your house, after they've torn up your life and done the work of the enemy in your life, they'll leave you in a mess. But I'm telling you tonight, your strength is is through surrendering. Your strength is through surrendering. We got one more passage of scripture to look at tonight. If you have your Bible or your instrument, go over to 2 Peter, 2 Peter, the first chapter. Go over to 2 Peter, there at the first chapter, amen. And I'm turning with you tonight as, as you're going forward. When you get there, go to 2 Peter, the first chapter. I want to I want to look at a verse there. Starting at verse number one. I, I want to read it and you can follow along if you are there. 2 Peter, the first chapter, looking at verse number one. It says, Simon Peter, a bond servant, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained the precious faith with us by righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given to us all things. Um, here it is. Let me read that last piece again. Because it looks like we had a little technical difficulty. It says, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. I, I want to drop it right there in this moment. Hold on to this. As we look at this scripture, the first thing you'll notice, here it is, Peter declares that he's a bond servant, that he's bound to this gospel, that he's a servant of the gospel and an apostle of Jesus Christ. That means he, he never met him in person in the sense of now he's been elevated from Peter being in a, a, a disciple to an apostle because he's in the church. But look at this. Notice what he says. He says, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of God, and Savior Jesus Christ. He makes it clear that this is not something we've done of ourselves. This is something that was a gift given to us through Jesus Christ by God the Father. So here we are now. We're trying to live a life of strength through surrendering. He makes it clear in, in, in the bottom of the verse there, if you go down to verse number three, 
He says, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. It has been revealed to us how we are to live as Christians. It's been revealed to us how we are to live as believers. To be strong causes us to have to surrender. But when we surrender our lives to Christ, we reap the benefit of a relationship with the Lord and God rewards us by giving us all things. All things, he said he will supply all of your needs. There's nothing you will be short of for serving the Lord. Y'all didn't get me. There's nothing you will be short of from serving the Lord. It's your commitment. I see it. It's your commitment. You got to be sold out. You got to be totally sold out. Some folk want the blessing, but they don't want to make the investment. The investment is surrendering your life to Jesus Christ. Some folk want the benefit but they don't want to surrender. I want it, but I want it on my terms. It's not necessarily on your terms. You got to hear me tonight. It's got to be on God's terms because the word of God said tonight, he says he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. If it ain't godly, God is not going to deliver it. But some of us want ungodly things to be delivered by God in our lives. Some of us want God's stamp of approval on ungodly living, but God ain't going to put his stamp of approval on ungodly living when it's not lining up with what he's mandated through his word. He's given to all, he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Anything outside of godliness, God doesn't have to honor. Y'all didn't get it tonight. Righteousness is imputed to us. Can I help somebody tonight? And, and we're going to have to go. Righteousness is imputed to us. It's not something that I can go in the store and buy. It's put on me because I accepted Jesus Christ. And, and to be righteous doesn't mean that I'm perfect. But being righteous means that I'm living within the purity of Jesus Christ. Y'all didn't get it. D to be righteous means that I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I've made a commitment to live according to God's words and his mandates. I've surrendered myself totally unto him. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what it looks like. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what it smells like. At the end of the day, God sees me through Jesus Christ. A filthy rag, yes, I am. A sinner saved by grace, yes, I am. But when he looks at me, he got to look at Christ on Calvary before he can ever get to me. That's the righteousness that we have when we totally surrender. When we surrender unto God, we find strength through giving up. I give away that I might have. It doesn't make sense. I have more now than I've ever had, but I bless more folk in my life. And the more folk I bless, it seems like the more God blesses me. Y'all don't understand. When you totally surrender and do it God's way, God will make a way for you. You, got, you don't have to worry about whether there's a job to go to. Don't you know your God can create a job for you? If you just get on his page, you worrying about how the bills going to be paid. Don't you know God will make a way to pay the bills, but you got to trust him enough to get on his page? It's strength through surrender. Here in the text, Peter says it very clear that he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Oh, God, I like that last word there, virtue. Because, see, I know some saints out there who don't have any virtue in their life. Oh, God. You go over there to Proverbs, uh, what is it, Psalms 31. They talk about a virtuous woman. I know some folk 
who don't have any virtue. But you, you, if you are a child of God, if you're a child of the king, you've got to learn to surrender. You've got to totally surrender. But to surrender and to live in total submission of God, then it takes you to a place where you will find yourself with some virtue. Everything is not for you. Oh God, you can't do what everybody else does and think it's going to work in your favor if you're totally sold out unto God. You can't allow your flesh to lead you into dark places if you say you're sold out to God. You've got to make a decision in your own life that is for him I live and for him I die. I'm going to give it all to him. To him I owe. I'm going to give it all to him. And when you decide to give it all to him, Roxana, when you decide that nothing else can replace him in your life, when you decide that above all things in heaven and earth, God is the most important thing in my life. When you make that decision, God will step into your life and do an awesome work in your life. Peter made it very clear there in the scripture. You can read it for yourself. Yeah, that he's done it. But if you go down a little farther, let's, let's finish it right. Let's finish it right. Verse number four, by which have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises. God has made us some promises that through these, you may be partakers of the divine nature. See, when you live right, God opens a door for you to come into to be a partaker. You got to get within his will for your life and you got to live under his protection and his providence. You've got to surrender yourself so that you can walk in his strength. You become partakers of the divine nature. But notice what it closes with. Peter says, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Y'all didn't get it. There's some stuff in this world, some lustful stuff. There's some items and material things in this world. There are trappings. And if you're not careful, the trappings of this world will breed corruption in your life. And if you are not totally surrendered, you'll get your eyes on the lustful things of life. And if you're human, lust can come after you. you you're not perfect. You, I don't care how you look at it. Oh, I want to teach right now, but we're on the time. I, I want you to understand that there are some things in this world that will catch your eye. And if you are not careful, it will lead you down a road that will take you farther away from your relationship with God because you haven't totally surrendered him to him. And he has and he hadn't put a hedge around you because you hadn't come through the door that he opened for you. You're still walking in self pride. You're still walking in envy. You're still walking in jealousy. You're still walking in, in, in anger and frustration. And these things are opening up other doors in your life. And you get to looking at what other folk are doing and what other folks may have. And, and, and you start lusting, desiring the things of this world. You become corrupted. But if we were careful that if we could live a life of godliness and virtue, God made, a pro made promises to us. There are over a hundred promises in the Bible that he's made to us. And if we could just remember a few, he says, if you live right, I'll give you the desires of your heart. If you live right before me, I promise you that I'll never leave you nor uh, or forsake you. He says, if you live right before me, I'll supply all of your needs. Then he gives us an eternal promise through his son, Jesus Christ. He says, if you live right, I got another place for you, not made with hands. I got another home. So you got to understand why it's important for you to surrender totally unto him. Your strength is through surrendering. I, ain't, I don't have to have my eyes on earthly possessions because anything earthly is temporary. 
All of this shall pass away. But I know that through Jesus Christ, I have another home that one day I'm going to serve journey to. My journey down here will be over. Oh God, I'm glad about it, that I got it worked out. No more pain, no more suffering, no more shame. But I'm going to have a day when I've been made perfect in the presence of God because I decided to totally surrender myself unto him through Jesus Christ. I just thought about a blessing tonight. And I hope you're there in your thought process to understand that the, there may be one thing standing between you and the blessings of God. There may be one thing standing between you and the blessings of God. You ready for it? It may be you because you've decided that you're going to do it your way rather than doing it God's way. Oh, I, I, I understand what you're thinking in your life because somebody just said tonight, oh, be Christian is being born. You don't have a life. Oh, baby, I got a life. You need to understand tonight. See, when you get it right, you got a real life. You hadn't started to live until you do it his way. See, some folk are dead right now and don't even know it. They walking around and breathing, but they really not living because all their life can tell is nothing but struggle, pain, and sorrow. I'm okay because even at home doing uh, COVID-19, even at home, I'm all right. I got peace. I got everything that I need and, and, and it's okay. I'm living because Jesus Christ has given me life. Oh, I wish I could help somebody tonight. Start living. If you hadn't trusted him totally, if you hadn't surrendered, you need to find your strength through surrendering. When you give in, he gives up. Y'all didn't give it. When, when you give in, God will give up. I don't mean give up on you. I mean, he'll give up some things unto you. You've got to give in to get. You can work all you want, hard as you want to, but I found a better way. I just trust God. I decided I was going to trust him with everything that I have. I decided that I was going to allow him to have his way. There's no looking back from this point on. I hope somebody heard me tonight. There is strength through surrendering. And we'll continue this series when we come together next Wednesday. And as we get ready to go, I just want to speak into your life tonight. Just a prophetic word. I want to leave it with you. Because I want you to walk away from this study understanding. I didn't beat up on you. I'm trying to help you be better. Now, I want to sow a word in your life right now. Here it is. In all that we're dealing with, in all that we're going through, in all that we're experiencing, the tragedy of the COVID-19 situation, the loss of life, for the believer, life is never lost. You got to understand that you don't lose your life when you're in Jesus Christ. You don't lose your life when you're in Jesus Christ. You only fall asleep. And when you wake up, you will be with him. It's not over. The journey is not over. Here's the prophetic side of it. It's not over until God says it's over. And the last time I checked, he didn't pronounce the end in his word. He said we would be with him. So that's something to hold on to. If, 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 if it gets worse tomorrow, keep praising God. If it seems like there's no hope for tomorrow, keep praising God. If it looks like it might turn your way, keep praising God. It's not over till he says it's over. And in his word, he promised us 
eternal life. So let that bless somebody tonight. That your hope is in him, not in yourself. Reach beyond your circumstance in your spiritual life. Don't allow the world to define who you are by your circumstance. Did you get me tonight? Don't allow the world to define who you are by your circumstance. Everything is not what it appears. Some of you have fallen susceptible to your circumstances. Because I'm going through something, because I'm having to endure something, doesn't define who I am in Christ Jesus. I told Roxanne, and I'm telling those who are, who are looking in tonight, sometimes God will let you go through a setback because it's a setup for something greater. So what don't allow your situation or circumstance to define who you are as a believer in Christ Jesus. Keep praising God. Keep worshiping God. Keep your focus on him. Learn to walk in total surrender. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Be like him. Have, make no reputation for yourself. Learn to be a servant. Humble yourself. And then most of all, learn to be obedient. And watch how God will show up in your life. Watch how he'll show up in your life. I promise you tonight, there is strength through surrender. So as we get ready to go out different ways tonight, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Uh, I, I thank God for each one of you, Roxana. I thank for I'm thankful for all the partners who, who've come on board and started to bless us by being a part of a virtual platform for Bible study. I thank God for you, and I hope you heard a word tonight that's going to bless your life, and in some way, some shape, form, or fashion, that you will come out of this thing greater than what you went in. Don't waste your time the time that you have right now. Come out of this thing with something already worked out. Let the Lord speak in your life. Let the Lord speak in your life. And as we get ready to go, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for tonight. Lord, we thank you for the lesson. We thank you for this lesson in strength through surrender. Lord, we thank you because we need to learn how to humble ourselves, how to make no reputation for ourselves, not seeking status or position or power in this earthly realm, but surrendering under spiritual authority, Lord God, that your son Jesus Christ will become to us as you were to him, that Lord God, he'll become our covering, that Lord God, that he'll be a hedge around us, that Father God, that he'll be the one to open doors for us. And Father God, we say thank you. Thank you now. And as your man servant, Lord God, I thank you for every individual. I thank you for every person who, who came to this platform tonight uh, to, to receive this Bible study. Lord God, bless their families, bless their loved ones, bless anybody that's connected to them, Lord God, even tonight, whether they tuned in or not. Then, Father God, on tomorrow, we're careful to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise as we start the new day's dawning. And Father, have your way in each one of our lives. Lord God, help us to be the people that you've called us to be. Teach us to live within your will and your provision according to your purpose. Help us to find contentment and patience as we carry on this life that we live. And then Lord, we'll be careful to give you the honor, the glory and the praise for you alone are worthy. And it's in Jesus name, we pray. I thank God for each one of you. I hope you receive that word tonight. I hope you receive the blessings of God in your life for being faithful. Uh, to Roxana, I thank you, Roxana, for, for, for being present tonight. Share the word with somebody. Share with a friend. Evangelism doesn't stop because we're not, we're not inside of bricks and mortar. We still have to carry the good news out to other people. So if you heard something today that's blessed your life, 
Don't be hesitant to share it with somebody else. Go out and make some ways for Jesus Christ. I promise you, uh, it's only to your benefit. So until we see each other again, Roxanne, we'll look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Uh, we're going to have virtual worship. We're back in the house. Uh, we, we're going to bless the Lord through all of this. We're going to lift a praise unto his name. To all those that have been partnering with us, we, we, we ask you to come back, be a part of the virtual worship relationship. Uh, we've, we've opened a door here that is going to be hard to close when we get back in the building. We're going to keep going and doing even bigger and greater things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So until the next time we see each other, until the next time we come together in a virtual platform, I just say be careful, be safe, trust God, and be the person that he wants you to be. Remember now, our new saying there, Rock Sound, stay woke, eyes open. Stay woke, eyes open. Keep your eyes on God, because I promise you, he's going to do something great. He's going to do something great in your life. Keep watching. God bless you, and God keep you is my prayer until we meet again. Have a great evening.